Well, by chance, our location report this week also concerns intergalactic goings-on, only this time it's them coming down to have a look at us. Morons from Outer Space was written by Mel Smith and Griff Reese jones alias and alas, Smith and Jones, and predictably it's a somewhat bizarre addition to the science fiction genre. On location for this epic, the first film incidentally to be completed under the regime of EMI's present head of production, Verity Lambert, we asked the two authors whether they had themselves in mind for the leading roles when they concocted the screenplay. We didn't write it originally for ourselves. We didn't write it in the view of saying, you know, this is the part I'm going to play through. We wrote it as a film and then said, which part do you want to play? And he chose what I think is the best part, so I chose the next best part, and he he probably thinks the reverse, and as a result, we, you know... My, mine was, was the best part, because it was because, I, because we wrote it, so that my character spends all his time in America. Clever move, you see. So you think, <laughs> I'll get over to America for a few weeks. Uh, and of course, uh, we're doing it all in a little wood, just behind Pinewood. <laughs> Black wood. What a, the, the magic of cinema, Pinewood. you see. At Pinewood Studios, the film was partly made in what seems to be the space equivalent of that doomed vehicle, the Ford Edsel. It was directed by Mike Hodges, generally better known for such tough thrillers as Get Carter. One question, though, that seemed worth asking, why do the writers call it morons from outer space? It's positive, isn't it? Positively not yeah, yeah. particularly tasteful. Yeah, Jim described it. All those films which are called sort of things like... Uh, um, I can't think of a single name of the film now. That's what I mean, you see. Because you can't remember the name of any of the films that are being made. We thought, at least if it's called Morons from Outer Space, everybody knows what it's about, to a certain extent. And there it is, and it's sort of... There. Sort of there, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. It concerns four alien uh, creatures who come from another planet, and they inadvertently land on this planet. Um, they are approached with enormous trepidation while the whole world waits to find out what kind of creatures are inside this spaceship which lands. It's a sort of close encounters scene, in a sense. The whole scene is a slight pastiche of the scene with uh, the character Truffaut plays with the, the organ and the, and the ship landing. It's sort of it's a parody of that scene, basically. Thank God you're here. If ever there was a time when the skills that you are endowed with were what we have need of, then this is it. Gentlemen, May I present the man who will unravel the mysteries of the alien's language. <laughs> this is the big one. Qu'est-ce que vous dites? Je ne comprends pas. Il y a quelqu'un qui parle français? The big one. The big one? <laughs> one. Uh, talking to the aliens. The Pajo. Uh, I play Graham, the alien's earthling friend. And I'm a sort of well-meaning trainee journalist who, uh, through dint of nobody else really wanting to be involved, I'm the one who goes and covers the story of the moron, of the spaceship arriving, and I'm the one who finds out what happens to them and ultimately rescues them from the evil clutches into which they fall and ultimately takes them forward to bigger and better things. And ultimately he has the biggest part. Right, everybody out. What is all this, for Christ's sake, Ambrose? Only a moment. Come on, come on. Out, 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 Come on, come on. Let's go. Not you. You're on in five minutes. Graham, we've been thinking. Yeah, well, there's a first time for everything. Get dressed. I always knew that comedy was difficult, but I'm fine. The one you shot a scene, you're never quite sure that it's very funny or not. And as the business of the scene is to be funny, um, it is rather difficult. But man's great. Not a clue, man. Off the record. No, he's a great, great man. Great man. Very, 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 very experienced, which is great for us, because, I mean, we sort of meander around the edges of things yeah. a bit, sort of aware of what we want in terms of the comedy, perhaps. But actually having somebody as kind of technically as proficient. The great thing about Mike is that he doesn't... Um, you know, we say he's very experienced, he's made a lot of films, but he doesn't come to it with this sort of mystique of filmmaking. When we've worked with him, he's been very eager to show us how he wants to do things and how he wants, how we can work for him. That's right, yeah. So he's, yeah. Not, he's not come in, you know, on Olympian heights. He's a tiny, anyway. Could I hear the wild track on the music, please? Right. Now yes. we'll have to exit this one. That's right, absolutely. Okay, fine, cut. Right, <laughs> <laughs> The message of the moron smart is We well, are not alone, unfortunately. <laughs> You know, I can remember Griff Rhys-Jones when he was producing and I was presenting the news quiz on Radio 4. Where did I go wrong? 